we're putting together a cake. Something that actually does come up in competition is when someone who is a savory chef has to whip up a dessert. And you kind of always want to go to chocolate because it's so good. Right here I just have 14 ounces of dark chocolate that I'm just melting over a makeshift double boiler, which is just a pot with a little bit of simmering hot water underneath it. You could do a mix, by the way, of milk and dark chocolate. You can do this with all white chocolate. So you can kind of decide how sweet or not sweet. So that's part one of what we call a ganache. A ganache is just a fancy French term for when you melt chocolate and you mix it with cream, which is divine. And you, the result is basically a hot fudge that you could pour right over ice cream, brownies. You can also just use it as a makeshift glaze or frosting. And you can see that as it's melting, I'm stirring it with a rubber spatula. I'm making sure none of the chocolate cakes or scorches on the edges. It's important. You don't have to constantly stir it, but as you're melting it, you definitely want to keep an eye on it. This is two cups of heavy cream with a teaspoon of vanilla, which I'm just gonna add in there. I don't know if you know this, but vanilla was actually originally made to flavor chocolate. It wasn't its own flavor. Now we definitely wanna mix cream and chocolate together in optimum form. And if you want a super glossy, super smooth, luscious ganache, one of the big tricks I've learned is to have the cream and the chocolate actually be a similar temperature. So they're almost friendlier and happier to meet up. So once the chocolate is melted, take it carefully off the heat. We've got our little double boiler. And then part two, get that cream to a similar temperature. So I'm just gonna pour the water off my little double boiler so we don't dirty extra pots for efficiency. I'm just gonna take the chill off the cream and get it where it's jacuzzi plus jacuzzi. It's not swimming pool jacuzzi. You could also add a tiny pinch of cinnamon or a dot of nutmeg or a dot of pumpkin pie spice or a warm spice or even a pinch of cayenne or paprika. Those are things I often do when I'm competing to just amplify the flavors because when the judges are eating, it's that pop that extra little je ne sais quoi that can make the difference, right? And then stir. And I know you're thinking, can I whisk? You know what, you can, but you don't wanna be too vigorous with this. You actually wanna combine it nice and gentle. Get a glossier, smoother ganache. And it's gonna look at first like, uh-oh, this isn't right, right? It's gonna look all weird. Just keep stirring. Keep the faith. Can you see this changing? Starts out looking kinda weird funky, and it just gets smoother and smoother looking. Now this is still pretty warm, but you can see it's got a nice texture already. Very important when you're competing. You want something with great results quickly, right? Look at this, I can pour it right on a cake. Okay, so I have a ganache. Let's go that extra step, right? When I'm competing, I'm thinking, what can I do that's better than that? better than what anybody else can do. We can turn this into really a makeshift buttercream, right? And just so we have an idea in the beginning, we're looking for like a, a, like a frosting, right? Right now what we have is more like a glaze, which is great, but we want to turn this into a quickie frosting. Two cups of sugar right in there. We want to get the sugar into the warm ganache so that the sugar melts a little bit and dissolves. The sugar will also help cool this, right? And then just to turn it into a, a little quickie buttercream, I'm gonna pour that right into the mixer. And we're gonna whip it a little bit just to cool it and thicken it up. Nice and slow and low, take it easy. So we're doing a bunch of stuff, we're cooling it. We're letting the sugar mix with the chocolate. We're fluffing it. This is, and I'm just standing here. Now as it aerates and whips, it's gonna get a little lighter in color, right? It's gonna be a little less dark. Don't be alarmed, the taste is the same. It's just air and fluffiness going in there as you whip. And it cools pretty quickly, right? Because there's a lot of fat in here. It actually cools quickly. And you know, when I have a lot of fat, I don't know about you, but I just add more fat. This is one and a half sticks of unsalted butter that I'm just slowly gonna drop in here in bits. Why do this bit by bit? There's a lot of fat in here. So whenever you mix cream and chocolate and all these rich ingredients together, you gotta give them a minute. See how it's getting glossy? You can even smell it. It's funny because we don't really think of butter as acidic, but it's got acidity to it, and so does the chocolate. 
So you're getting all these cool, rich flavors and smells and this sort of vibrant acidity that makes anything sweet divine. We'll just let this whip a few more minutes, right? Or you can even stop now, once it's mixed in. Right, fresh off the presses. I could pour this right on a cake from here. And then you can see it after it's cooled for another hour or so. And you've got this multi-purpose. We start with the ganache, we finish with the buttercream. Either way, you're crushing it and it's all homemade. All right, we're putting together a cake. I've got two beautiful yellow cakes here. We've got these beautiful edges, but I always just, when I'm layering a cake, run a serrated knife over the top just to even it out. You see that? So now I've got this straight edge as opposed to this puffed up edge. That way when we stack the layers, right, they're nice and flat. And then you just cut in the middle, keeping your arm and your hand flat. You can even put your hand on top to keep it from moving or sliding. And I've got my four layers. You could also just frost this as two layers, right? But you know, four is more impressive. Now, I have a chocolate frosting that I made, that quickie buttercream. I've got my cakes. I'm gonna pour a caramel over the top to make my childhood birthday cake. And to do that, I'm just gonna make a dry caramel. One and a half cups of sugar straight in a pan. And we're just gonna get that melting over medium heat. We're gonna keep an eye on that while we put this cake together. We've got a Lazy Susan. You can do it on a plate if you don't have a Lazy Susan, right? And we have that quickie buttercream that I just whipped up, right? You can see as this cools, the buttercream will get more solid and thick and firm. Now we have that layer. This is where I sawed a way to flatten it. So I'm gonna put that down because the weight of the cake as I stack it will weigh down any rough edges, you know? Notice how I'm not really spreading. I just put a bunch of this frosting in the middle and I just flatten it a little. And the reason is because if I mix a lot, the crumbs are gonna get mixed into the frosting. And I'll take another. Again, this is where I cut. And this side, the bottom is actually perfect, right? Because it doesn't have any of that crummy edge. Same principle. Not a lot of actual frosting goes on when you're frosting the cake. Let gravity do its work, right? Because I'm gonna pop another layer, right? And as I do that, the frosting will flatten itself. And as you're building this, see that peeking out? As you're building it, keep your eye on it, right? Keep it so that you spin it all around, you press where it needs a little pressing. That's what the beauty of a Lazy Susan is, you're lazy. Okay, so remember, I've got one and a half cups of sugar in there. I know your impulse is gonna be to stir, stir, stir. You don't actually wanna stir, and you don't actually wanna use utensils too much to mix this, because the more impurities go into the sugar as you're cooking the carabao, the more likely you are to get that clumpy, funky stuff. You want a super clean pan, and you wanna just keep spinning it. You can see it's starting to clump and brown. You just gotta keep your eye on it, but don't stir it a lot. Another layer, it's really useful by the way to have a bowl with a little spout. You could even put this in a little pitcher or a measuring cup and pour it on there. And then that last layer, right on top. You want a bottom to be on the top when you're done because that's the less crummy. And then, again, I'm barely touching the cake. I'm really just telling the frosting, it's like air traffic control, right? Just tell the planes where to land. So you can kind of give the cake a rest. Again, you notice how I'm swirling. Notice how this is turning from sugar into just a straight caramel. Now, the frosting we made is pretty fresh. The cakes are pretty fresh. So there's gonna be some movement. Don't stress that so much because you can always put the cake back. And then when we have enough on the sides, we just start spreading. Isn't that fun? Now you're gonna come down to the wire with this caramel and there's gonna be a point where it's almost all fully melted and caramelized and you're gonna say, but Alex, I need to stir. And you, and you do. It's 
get a clean spatula, and that's when we want to add our tablespoon of butter. Why? It's so good. We're adding it for taste, glossiness, and then you can stir. I actually love a rubber spatula for this, obviously heat proof. And now you see I'm off the heat, by the way. Heat's off. I don't need any more heat. One tablespoon of butter makes a miracle. Tiny pinch of salt in here. Just a pinch. Just wakes all that sugar up. Now this is hot, let me tell you. There's not much hotter in a kitchen than sugar. So you want somewhere to go to pour it out once you see it's good. Because even though I want to pour this in its liquid form over the cake, I don't want it to be blazing hot. I want to cool it. You just want to make sure before you pour it off that there are no little clumps of sugar left. And that's when using the side of the rubber spatula can be super useful. It's kind of thick with the butter. And then... And it's best if the cake has had a chance to chill and that frosting form a shell around it and then you just take this caramel and with wild abandon, you just pour it. And I know it feels funny to pour a hot caramel over a frosted cake, or a warmish caramel anyway. And you wanna pour on the edges to let it create those special drips. Notice how little frosting we actually did. We did more like spreading and pouring. Gravity will do a lot of this work for you. And I know you're thinking, Alex, how much of that caramel are you gonna put on there? And the answer is all of it. I feel like Bob Ross, you know, just painting little trees and snow and grass, it's so zen. And this will harden on top of the frosting and it'll form a shell. And it makes this cake kind of like, you know, two thirds cake and one third kind of kitty candy bar. Look at that. All around. And then you just have to decide where you're gonna like sink your knife to get those optimum slices. Tiny pinch salt to finish, just a tiny bit. There's a lot of sugar going on in here, right? With the caramel, the frosting, the cake itself, just a tiny sprinkle. And you'll see this is starting to firm up already. Just cut right in there. I mean, be reasonable about your slices, you know? Whatever that is. Are you guys ready for the moment of truth? I mean, and then I mean, all that's left to do is eat it and show off. Right, now let's just let's just look in, inside here for a second, shall we? I mean, this will win any competition. Forget it. Game over. Lights out. And you did it.